Have you ever dreamt of spinning up your own private cloud in the garage for less than the cost of a monthly subscription? What if you could turn that closet under the stairs into your own mini data center without having to mortgage your house? That, my friend, is what home labbing is all about. Learning how to run, manage, admin, and support IT and tech workloads in your own systems so you don't break a production environment. Sorry, Chad, you know it was an accident. And while getting the newest $4,000 Mac Pro is super tempting, the idea here is to learn on a budget, or at least it is for me and most of the home lab nerds that I know. So things like repurposing decommissioned enterprise IT gear is an awesome way to get high-end tech on a budget. Even if it is last-gen gear, it's usually worth it. Usually. Today, I wanna to go over some essential home lab gear under 100 bucks. And as usual, there will be timestamps along the way and links to this gear down in the description. But don't depend on just gear from Amazon. Although they are affiliate links, which means I get a little something something when you order using my links, which I do appreciate and it helps make videos like this possible, you can find some great deals on eBay or even your local Facebook marketplace. Like a few years back, I found used precision workstations for 50 bucks a pop. So I bought 20 of them and ended up selling most of them to my friends for the same price as what I paid for it because that's just the kind of guy I am. Stupid, spelled with two O's. Anyway, I'm rambling, let's get into the tech gear. Starting off is the infamous Tiny Mini Micro PCs. That name comes from the different OEM form factors, naming like Lenovo Tiny, HP Mini, and Dell Micro form factor desktops. These little PCs pack surprisingly capable compute into a very small footprint, drawing very little power and fitting on a shelf or stacking in a rack. They're your everyday workhorse for lightweight services. No need to fire up a full tower or noisy server. And while there are a ton of mini PCs out there, those are made from super entry-level components like the Intel N100 processor and non-upgradable RAM. Whereas these micro PCs usually have their processor socketed, so not only do you have lots of options available, you can even upgrade the processor and RAM in the future too. And if you shop hard enough and can settle for some basic spec units, you can find these under 100 bucks all day. These provide an excellent way to learn about virtualization and managing hypervisors, or learn routing with an OpenSense router, or even containers with Docker or Kubernetes. Then, when you break it, because you will break it, just wipe it and start over. No blood, no foul. Next up, believe it or not, is a label maker. That's right, nothing like forgetting what plug connects to which device which has totally never happened to me. Now, I label the cables that come with each unit after I get it set up and running. When you can identify each patch cable, port, and module at a glance, troubleshooting and reconfiguring becomes much faster and complete. No more guesswork or accidental hop swaps or plugging in an overpowered plug to a device. Moving on to the third unit on my list is a cable maker kit. I never really thought about how often I would use this kit. Making your own Lynx cables is a no-brainer. When you could pick up a 500-foot spool of Cat6 cable for around the price of a bunch of patch cables, just learn to make your own. Kits like this usually come with the maker tools, but also tend to come in a case and with a handful of RJ45 plugins to get you started right away. And next up, we have a portable monitor, or really monitors. A portable monitor gives you a dedicated display for headless devices or a second screen on the go. No need to drag a full-size monitor into your lab closet. It's lightweight, USB powered, and perfect for quick diagnostics, demos, or mobile workstations. Personally, I have both a 15 inch and a seven inch display because I tend to work in cramped spaces or on crowded workbenches. So a smaller display is key, but having a larger one is nice to take on the go or even grab as a fourth display in a pinch. And these have gotten really, really cheap lately. I remember when they were twice the price they are now. Wow, that made me sound really old. Wait, before we go any further, do me a favor and hit that like button if you find this kind of information valuable. It really does help the channel. Okay, selfless plug over. So the next home lab gear under a hundred bucks I could recommend getting is a network switch. This may seem like a no brainer. And while yes, having a dumb 
five port switch in your backpack is a must have for any field IT guy. Think about some of the old enterprise switches you could get for that price point and use it to learn about managing a true business class network at a fraction of the cost. I learn best by doing. And what's a better way than to dive into iOS to set up VLANs, port channels, STP, and access lists, just like in an enterprise environment. You can pick up a Cisco 2960X switch for well under our budget all day. And if you're practicing for a certification, Layer 2 is a great place to start. I should be on a t-shirt. Layer 2, it's a great place to start. Moving on is a quality UPS unit. A UPS, or uninterruptible power supply, with built-in surge protection is your home lab's first line of defense against brownouts, blackouts, and voltage spikes. It not only keeps your critical servers, switches, and NAS alive long enough for a graceful shutdown, but also shields them from power line drama that can fry components or corrupt data. Oh, and bonus brownie points here would be configure a Raspberry Pi or mini PC to detect a power loss via USB or network and automatically shut down or migrate VMs before the battery runs out. That is prime home lab nerd territory there, dude. Another no-brainer would be a good network router. Now, when I say good, I don't necessarily mean best of the best. I mean something that works for you now and can expand from there. Even DIY units like OpenSense makes sense here. OpenSense makes sense here. Yeah, I'm leaving it in. Your router is the gateway between your home lab and the world, or just the rest of your LAN. A dedicated flashable appliance lets you build real world networking skills, VPN tunnels, dynamic routing, while giving you total control over traffic, security, and segmentation. Create granular rules to isolate your sandbox home lab VLAN from your production lab or lock down remote access to specific services. Another bonus here, if you're on the road a lot, would be a travel router, one that can be set up quickly. Connect the travel router to hotel Wi-Fi and then point all your devices through its WireGuard or OpenVPN client to keep your traffic encrypted within a secure data tunnel. Now, something super important to not just any home lab, but any user really, is a backup drive. This could be as simple as a USB external drive to use as a backup target, either with automation or manual backups. A few bay navs would be fantastic in any home lab, but at our $100 budget, let's face it, this is gonna be an old and or on its last leg device. Why don't we save the NAS for a future video? Maybe one with a $500 budget. Don't forget to subscribe. But a drive isn't just gonna be for storing duplicates of your cat photos. You can automate rsync or clonezilla jobs to mirror your VM data store or piehole configs to an external drive overnight. Or you can run disaster recovery drills and unplug your main data store, boot from a live USB, and restore from the external drive to validate your backup procedure before real trouble strikes. Remember, a backup isn't a backup unless it's been restored, or something like that. And finally, rounding out our list is a network rack or shelf system. These can turn your random piles of gear into an organized, secure, and ventilated system. A true rack provides standard mounting points, better airflow, and simplified cable management, so you can add, swap, or troubleshoot hardware without an avalanche of boxes collapsing on you. You could get one of those smaller DeskPy 10-inch racks for around this budget, but they even make 19-inch full-size network or server racks within our price point here. I found everything from 4U to 15U at our budget. Heck, even one of those metal racks from Amazon. You know, the ones that hold extra food in the pantry? Those can be great ways to organize your gear. All right, that wraps up our tour of essential home lab gear under 100 bucks. What did I miss? Drop your must-have starter devices in the comments below. I wanna know what gear helped you level up your setup. Don't forget to check the description for my Amazon affiliate links, your clicks, help the channel make more content like this. So thank you for the support, and I'll see you fuckers on the next one.